Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back to another session of our series, Morning Reflections on the 99 Names of Allah. Inshallah, for our 12th session today, we'll be covering four names of Allah. Al-Tawab, Al-Ghafir, Al-Dhamb, Al-Ghafur, and Al-Ghafar. These names have uh, the meanings of forgiveness, of uh, uh, accepting repentance, and of turning back. So inshallah, let's get started here. Bismillah. Uh, beginning with At-Tawab. So now imagine that you are uh, on a path or in a journey or on a road. You're traveling wherever it may be. You're far from home. Um, and you have, uh, or you're even lost. Um, so you're going on this journey and you're, you're lost. And you ultimately have this feeling that you want to go back home um, and you want to return. But in order to return, there's got to be just by the linguistic meaning of it, you have to have a place or something to which you return to. Um, and it's very fascinating that uh, in Islam, uh, Allah has lifted up in Surah Al-Fajr uh, this, this, uh, this command um, for the souls that are at peace for uh, humanity in a sense to return, um, that erdji, that, that come back, uh, return, um, oh soul at peace, you know, when, when, when that soul recognizes its connection to Allah um, and its connection to the faith to return back. And you can't go back to a place where you have not been before. And so thinking about this aspect of Allah, not just as um, the one to whom we return to when we've made a, a, a mess up, but Allah is uh, was our starting point. Allah is our ending point. And this returning is not just a act of shame. It is a act of returning back to that source. And so um, Allah as At-Tawab is the one to whom we return, is often translated as the acceptor of repentance, the ever relenting. And this name has so much more meaning, especially in its root, um, in which it fundamentally means to turn from something to something else. And when it comes to Allah, this name has two primary meanings. First, that Allah turns himself towards us. And second, that he accepts when we turn back to him and loves when we turn back to him. And so this aspect of uh, turning back uh, in Islam, this aspect of turning back to Allah is one that's a twofold action, that it not just involves a one-way uh, turning back, but when we turn back to Allah, Allah turns to us. Uh, and there's a beautiful shared moment there, um, a vulnerability uh, of forgiveness, of repentance that's offered, and uh, a lot that is happening there beyond just a top-down kind of relationship. So seeing um, there's much more um, to uh, what Allah has to offer us, then we oftentimes give Allah credit for. So in this aspect of Allah turning to us, Allah turns to us when we come to Allah seeking repentance genuinely, seeking forgiveness genuinely. Allah turns to us in mercy and not in harm. Allah turns to us to inspire uh, in such a way that it inspires a turning back to Allah. Uh, Al-Ghazali states that Allah facilitates the causes of repentance through manifestations of his signs or through the books or through the revelations or even through the example of the Prophet uh, it's also that it may be a situation in life brings us back to Allah, reconnects us with Allah, no matter how far gone we might be. It may be a really positive and good thing that we have, a good community, uh, good friends, things that turn us back in that way. Or it may be a crisis. It may be a negative uh, thing that we perceive in our life. It may be uh, a difficult situation or some kind of hardship that ends up having us turn back to Allah. Think about uh, Malcolm X and, and his story and how he turned back to Allah in prison and found his connection to Allah and to the faith in uh, prison. Uh, and similarly, when I when I go to the prison uh, where I serve as a chaplain, uh, this, this comes up so many times with brothers who have recently just accepted Islam uh, that they've maybe made not the best decisions in life or have just been at the wrong place in the wrong time, but now they're in a place marginalized from society where uh, they are branded as felons or criminals and have to go through so many different uh, burdens and or, or hurdles and, and, and loops just to try and uh, get back and get their footing and redeem themselves. Yet it is in a lot of these spaces where they're isolated and kind of put in the periphery that they encounter uh, Allah and rediscover Allah um, for their relationship. And so it's very interesting to see how certain situations in life, whether adverse or very conducive, can bring this uh, reconnection about. 
And so whatever it is that causes us to return to Allah, Allah says as a baseline, he loves that those who do so and those who return, uh, whether it was from uh, the very beginning um, of humanity with uh, Adam and Hawa or Eve, um, when they offer a prayer of repentance after uh, trans uh, making a, uh, a transgression in, in, in which Allah uh, had you know, ousted them from, from the garden of bliss, uh, and, but still accepted their, uh, their, their offering of uh, repentance and their seeking of repentance and forgiveness, accepting it with mercy, and not just accepting it with mercy, turning back to them to do so, turning, uh, turning them, uh, turning himself in this aspect uh, to accept their turning as well. And so it may feel like it causes a shame uh, in this aspect of turning back to Allah, because when you return to something, when you go back, you have to go back on that path that you just came up. So let's say you've been leave, leading a life uh, and going down a path that has been fairly destructive. Uh, it's been marked by some very uh, maybe shameful things along the way, whatever it may be. Uh, and then coming back and returning back, you have to kind of process back to these things. You have to make amends. You have to go through these things and understand that which you did. But What's beautiful in this is that uh, even though it may cause us shame because we have to admit that we are at fault, we have to reconcile um, the, the things that we did that we might not be proud of, uh, we sometimes get discouraged that, uh, you know, Allah wouldn't, you know, wouldn't want anything to do with us or even accept us because uh, if we were to go back to any human person, they themselves would probably, uh, you know, have a very complicated way of accepting our forgiveness. Not often is it that people uh, see you the exact same way after forgiving you, especially after something grievous, um, that they uh, may in fact, you know, not want to see you anymore. They may change how they interact with you, all this different stuff. And so how we think of humans who would turn us away when we come seeking uh, repentance or forgiveness, uh, we sometimes attribute that to Allah. And we think that Allah would do the exact same. So returning to Allah might be and might feel like a very heavy task, but understand and bring all that burden that you do in that in that moment. But understand that that moment that you have, that seeking repentance, seeking genuine forgiveness and uh, seeking from Allah a, a genuine turning, it is nothing but a liberating experience. It, it helps offload that burden because it is something that Allah encourages and Allah loves and Allah wants to see more of that when we make mistakes, even minor, we recognize that our connection to Allah is one to return and to uh, have our uh, uh, plates cleansed, our slates to be cleaned. Um, so re recall that. And lastly, don't uh, let guilt keep you from going back. It may be a thorny path on the way back. It may feel like hot coals. It may not be uh, something that's ideal, but go back because Allah is something that uh, Allah, uh, it, the, sorry, the forgiveness is something that Allah loves to give. The turning is something that Allah loves to offer. And uh, Allah is happy uh, with not just the repentance that's being offered, but happy to uh, accept it. And so, um, as we mentioned, don't let the guilt keep you from uh, from going back. You want to take it in a process. It doesn't have to be that you just jump in uh, and, and, and you know, just not take it easy on yourself. Definitely process it out, but understand that Allah is at the end of the line. Allah is willing uh, and with, uh, with these, you know, kind of open arms, kind of in a sense, willing to accept our repentance and uh, offer this forgiveness. So when we live with this name, we want to turn back to whatever state that we're in, knowing that it's not too late to return and knowing that we need to make amends and do uh, good in order to help facilitate this returning. If we are just in a negative space, that returning is going to be difficult. But when we do things conducive to benefiting us in other spaces, benefiting our faith in other ways, it becomes more conducive to build that relationship with Allah, to see Allah as the one to whom we can return. Now, when we return to Allah, especially at, in seeking um, forgiveness or repentance, there are the names that offer this repentance that cover our sins and that cleanse our sins. And those are the names of Al-Ghafir al them al Al-Ghafur, and Al-Ghafar. Uh, these names have the meanings of the forgiver of sins, uh, the oft forgiving, and the ever forgiving. Uh, these names are a response to all of us uh, who wonder what happens when our mistakes, uh, regarding our mistakes, when we ask Allah for forgiveness. What, what happens when we come with sincere uh, intention and sincere uh, desire for repentance and forgiveness? What happens? And these names, these three beautiful names, lift up how Allah treats the, the one who turns to Allah gently and genuinely. And so the root meaning of these words of al-ghafir, al-ghafur, and al-ghafar, they have the uh, shared meaning of covering and protection. And uh, 
asking, in a sense, uh, this aspect, when we ask for, for forgiveness um, through these names, we ask a lot to not just cleanse our sins or cleanse the slate on which our sins are written, but to cover our sins, to make them invisible, uh, but to also protect us from them, from repeating them, from going down other avenues of similar sins. And so this aspect of maghfira or forgiveness is a covering or protection, not just in this life, but also uh, in the next. So when you seek that forgiveness, when you seek that repentance, you're actually uh, building something that will benefit you, not just in this life, but in the hereafter. And so Allah empowers us with the knowledge that he forgives uh, and that we can be better. Uh, and these names humble, but also empower us uh, because they convey the same point that al-ghafir al dam concerns sins will be forgiveness uh, for, forgiven if if uh, if approached with genuine repentance and genuine forgiveness, um, see, uh, seeking of forgiveness. Al-Ghafur is the one that forgives over and over, and Al-Ghafar is the one who would even forgive the gravest of sins. And knowing this forgiveness, as I mentioned, should give us hope, should give us a love for Allah, it should energize us to do better, but it should also make us aware of learning from our mistakes, to not publicize our uh, our missteps, and to make these instead as teaching moments. Uh, we, we shouldn't be be proud of our sins and say, oh, Allah is going to forgive us and then go back and repeat the sin. No, these, these uh, names require intentionality, but it should also give us that, that positive hope that even if we slip up here, if we make a slip or we, we make a mistake, uh, we go back to Allah in sincerity, we can still become even better, even better, even better. And think about the pious predecessors who formed the first Islamic community. These weren't people who were initially before Islam exactly saints or people that were uh, without sin or without blessing. Um, they were a community that needed uh, divine intervention. And, and think of them as uh, the pillars of our faith. Think of them as having uh, at the for being at the forefront uh, of that connection to Allah but see where they started from and see where they ended. So that, that is all possible through Allah. So as we mentioned, that uh, the, the most forgiving um, and knowing Allah is the most forgiving means knowing that Allah also uh, appreciates our effort, uh, our, our gradual effort to get better. It's not an all or nothing thing. Um, Allah appreciates the struggle um, and understands the struggle that, uh, that, that it is to offer uh, to repentance and to seek forgiveness. And so when we're seeking forgiveness, we want to remind ourselves this brings blessings from Allah. It polishes the heart and it opens the door of relief. And when we want to live with these names, we want to first and foremost reflect on our state. Where are we with respect to our spirituality? What are some things that we're doing that we can live without? What are some things that we're not doing enough of that we can increase more of? Um, think about uh, this, this forgiveness is something that is offered in abundance. We want to understand that we can go to Allah, not just for the seeking of good deeds, but also seeking that forgiveness, seeking the repentance where Allah is, is the one who we can go to, to wipe our tears, to understand uh, and to mend our brokenness and our and, and the cracks that might form uh, within us. So we want to remind ourselves to be in gatherings that uh, Allah is remembered in, to forgive others as Allah uh, would forgive us and to treat them in the same way. And know again and again that it's never too late to turn back to Allah and ask for forgiveness. It's not only welcome, it's encouraged and it's loved. So may Allah allow us to recognize the beauty of these names. May Allah allow us to have these opportunities to always turn back to Allah in repentance. Uh, may Allah uh, make our hearts conducive and warm our hearts and connect our hearts to seek genuine repentance, uh, to return to Allah and to be bestowed uh, that which Allah gives in forgiveness, in covering, and in protection for this life and the next. Until next time, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.